I'm just leaving uh, Shadow Cliff here. Great place, great hostel. Uh, it's founded as uh, like a spiritual retreat center. And uh, yeah, it's a very restful, peaceful place, I would say. Wonderful location up on this cliff overlooking Grand Lake. But the vortex is strong. <laughs> it's always the downside of having a nice place. And I've uh, uh, been doing a lot of planning. Planning. Um, all the way into Montana at this point now. Uh, just because at some point I need to sort of get realistic on what a successful end date is going to look like. I was looking in this regard at an old video that I'd seen probably when it was posted of Dixie when she completed the CDT. And that was early October, and she could not get through, uh, you know, on the best route to go to Waterton at the border. She had to take the Chief Mountain route, and that was uh, with a, yeah, I, I want to say it was the 8th of October of that year, you know. So every year, the weather's a little bit different, but it helps to have a visual of what it looked like for her back in uh, 2018, I think it was. Well, I'm not even at the halfway point right now, and I'm coming up here in a couple days on, um, on three months to where I am right now. Um, so anyway, been doing a lot of planning, and as I have said before, there's a military aphorism, planning is everything, the plan is nothing, because you're going to deviate from the plan, but by going through the process of planning, you see what is within the realm of possibility and what things have to happen in which order, uh, etc. So doing some extended planning for the first time uh, for the northern part of the CDT. Uh, also have to figure out what I'm going to do with respect to various fire closures which are currently in effect in northern Colorado. Uh, within a, a mile here of leaving uh, Grand Lake, I am going to have to come to the first fire closure I have ever had on any of the Triple Crown trails ever. Never had one on the PCT and you hardly ever get one on the AT. But uh, so I'm going to have to do a road walk around that. That's that's the standard, um, you know, continuous footpath anyway through Rocky Mountain National Park because the, the trail is closed. So, yep, uh, I'm going to be doing that and uh, and then I have resupplied up to Steamboat Springs, which is the next place. And some people, anyway, have been not hitching into uh, Steamboat Springs from Rabbit Ears Pass, which is sort of the standard thing in a normal year. But because of two different fire closures up in that area, some people are actually walking into Steamboat Springs and walking out of Steamboat Springs. Uh, in order to create a continuous footpath uh, and then eventually get back to the red line. So I um, haven't 100% committed to that, but I have enough food, I think, to enable me to do that for the segment from Grand Lake, Colorado, where I am now, up to Steamboat Springs, the next resupply point. So we'll see what today brings. We'll see what the coming days bring. Here's one of these fire closures, which is going to stop me here on the trail 
uh, pretty quick. Um, it's funny, I was talking with cougar bait yesterday and uh, I was saying it, it amazes me how different forest fires are, are different and the effects that they leave are different. Uh, here you can see, you know, pretty much scorched earth, but the grass is, you know, coming back. Some places you'll see forests in which the bottom halves of all the trees are burned, but the tops are green. You'll see other ones that it's exactly the opposite. The fire went from the treetops to the treetops, which are all burned, but down below it's relatively unscathed. The most devastating fire that I saw was the mountain fire from the San Jacintos, which would have been now seven years ago, I believe. When I was there two years ago, not only were there no, or very few, uh, trees left standing, there were very few trees on the ground that could be identified. It was just like ash. It was like Mordor. There, and, and five years after the fire, there was very little in the way of greenery that had reestablished itself. As I recall, there were places where the only thing that appeared to have survived were these like palmettos or something akin to that that had a bulb left and you could see the bulb above ground a bit scorched you know it was black but there were the first signs of greenery coming out from the bulb you know springing forth a new leaf of some sort yeah very odd anyway forest fires something I believe will not be far from my uh, forefront of my planning in the entire northern half of the CDT. How to get through these areas. What is likely to go up in the next couple weeks? Yeah. Okay. Something for me to think about. And yet, there's the little stream right there, bringing moisture to this area.